All right, um, we're, we'll uh, continue on and we'll actually get to those uh, towards the end here. All right, so that was namespaces. Let's enter into the picture of WSDL. WSDL means Web Services Description Language. It's a, a specification that's used strictly at development time to describe the web service that you're either trying to connect to or it's a document that you um, use to describe to somebody else the web service that you're offering. And in a WSDL you include the names of uh, the operations and the messages and the location of the web service. Essentially it's, it's a, a way to describe that web service. It's very similar in concept to how RPGLE service programs work in that they both declare functions or procedures or operations that are um, to be acted on. Uh, they both have input and output parameters that are used to send information and they describe those uh, to a full extent including data types. And they also describe, uh, they both describe the location. So in a, a service program's uh, uh, concept you've got the library that resides in one. In a web service respect you've got the actual URL location of where it resides. So to relate the two, if we had an RPG service program, and let's say the service program was called Ord SV and it has one module in it, and um, we had two sub procedures, excuse me, that were exported from that uh, service program. So here we've got two prototypes of a sub procedure called Ord Calc Price and Ord Search. Each one of these has uh, two parameters two named parameters and they're both specifying an external data structure that uh, further defines it as a parameter. When I create a WSDL, the first thing I always do is create uh, this uh, prototype and then also the, the port type which is the WSDL equivalent. So in RPG, a prototype could be considered equal to a port type. Um, right here we've got um, or rather, a, a port type is the, is the service program name, and uh, the prototypes are within the port. Right here, we've got the ORD SV, somewhere right down here. So this is our service program name. The operations are the sub procedures within that specific uh, service program or uh, web service. And then within each operation, named operation, we've got messages. So you can see that I've related this one to this one, and then the messages right here board calc price request can be related to this message over here. So once we define the port type, then we can go ahead and define the messages that are being passed back and forth. Over here we've got the messages and they're all data structures. And this for instance, board calc price is related directly down to here. So here's the composition of what a message looks like in a whistle. And within each message you can have multiple parts or fields. And each field is named and it has a data type. So this is a field called order ID and it has a type of integer as does uh, the response has two fields and it has two doubles that it's passing back which uh, equates to um, a, a pack decimal with uh, two decimal spaces. So at this point we've defined the port or the name of the service that we'd like to offer along with the operations within the service we've defined the messages that are going to be passed back and forth within each of the services or operations. And then we need to define exactly where it's located. Um, so here we've got the service tag and what this is doing is it's um, given a name to itself. So it's called ORD services and then it actually specifies the physical location of the program that can receive in this XML request, process it, do business logic calls and respond with an XML request. So in this example, this is my iSeries, and it's listening on port 8181. This is the library and RPG service program, or uh, this is actually just a regular program that's passing things off to a service program. So this is all residing on, on my iSeries. Now, the last piece that we need to bring this all together, now that we've defined the port type, the messages, and the service, is what's called a binding. A binding is used to connect a service. I lost my mouse. There we go. A service to a port type. So let's go to the next page here. The 
relate a binding to the RPG environment, so I'll just describe it uh, kind of in its purest form. Like I said on the previous page, a binding is used to relate a service to a port type, and it's also used to describe implementation de uh, details of exactly what is happening when this particular web service is executed. And what I mean by implement implementation details is it says, okay, what protocol is used? HTTP. What's the enveloping mechanism? So, so let's uh, dig into this and see exactly uh, what those mean. So here we can see that we've got the ORD binding, and we've got ORD binding right here also. So we related this one right here to this. So that's tied those two together. Now we need to tie the binding to a port type, and that's what we're doing right here. So we've got the ORD SV, and we're relating it to the port type over here. So that tied those two together. Now that we've tied all this together, we can further extend the binding and declare that um, SOAP is going to be used as the binding mechanism. The way binding tag works is it comes, or the way I like to describe it is it comes as a basis, and it comes as a basis with a whole bunch of holes in it. And you have to fill in the holes with uh, implementation details. So the first act of filling in the holes is to say, here's the, the uh, mechanism that we're using for transport. Um, we're, we're using SOAP as the transport, and it's going to be uh, using the HTTP protocol. Now, I describe that like um, it, it feels like you could have any number of things in there, when in reality, 99% of the time, um, you're going to be using SOAP over HTTP. So don't uh, feel like that's going to be some uh, big confusing thing that you have to try and tackle. The next thing that we have is we're going to further define each operation within that binding. So you notice that we've got operations over here. Well, we need to further define exactly how these are going to be sent across the wire. So once we've got um, uh, the pieces of data that make up this structure, how do we pass them across the wire? Well, that's what we're going to define right here in this uh, operation extension. So here is a SOAP operation, and it's a style document. The other option would be um, RPC remote procedure call. And it's got a, a SOAP action of ORD calc price. So once this um, SOAP operation makes it into uh, its destination, it'll tell the SOAP processor on that end to say, okay, I made it into your, to your machine. Here's the method or the operation that I want to execute. The body of the SOAP message is going to be literal. The other value we could put in here is encoded, and we'll see what that means in a little bit here. So um, just to reiterate, hey, binding is just a template with holes in it. You actually have to fill in the implementation details. So you have to specify what protocol you're going to use, HTTP in this case, what enveloping mechanism you're going to use, which is SOAP in this case, and then it tied uh, these, all these pieces together. Uh, going back a little bit now to the, the style and use, um, we, we specify document and literal. The other one would be RPC and encoded. And let's just uh, check. So here's an example of RPC encoded right down here. So this is an RPC encoded SOAP XML request. And the thing that makes it RPC is the fact that it's declaring the method that it is trying to call right here. And it declares a, um, what's termed a, a temporary namespace just so it's unique within this request. Hence the, the ambiguous name NF0. The fact, or what makes it encoded, is the fact that we're specifying the actual data type along with the actual data itself. Now, in my mind, this is completely useless because we also have a, or we, we should instead specify a, an external schema that can be used outside of the transactional XML. Uh, because right now we just multiplied the data we're sending across the wire by a couple times by having to include uh, information like this. So that's what an RPC encoded SOAP XML request looks like. Now the, the example that I was showing on the other page was actually document literal SOAP XML request. And basically what that does is when it's in document form, it means it's not in RPC form. So we immediately get rid of this tag right here. Notice that that is absent. And being that it's in literal form, that means that it's not encoded with the actual uh, data type of the data being sent 